Yes, I think what you're saying is that uh, how will the hotels revive themselves in the U.S. compared to, uh, let's say, India? Um, so I think the recovery is going to happen in different phases just because uh, there are so many factors which will affect it. I think the biggest thing is uh, do we find uh, vaccination which leads to consumer confidence? I think that's going to be a big one. The Every geography based on the number of cases and based on the local rules and restrictions will have a significant impact on travel, obviously. Uh, then these quarantine rules uh, for international travel coming in versus, uh, uh, you know, local travel, uh, that will also make a big impact. The good thing about India is that India is such a vast market that they actually can, uh, you know, manage pretty much on their own, uh, just by with local demand. And then a lot of these countries, including Europe and US, are also kind of homogenous uh, that they can do uh, things internally within uh, within the geography. So uh, these external constraints in terms of uh, who can travel, who can't. Even within the U.S., we are having some issues that uh, some of the states have, in you know, added quarantine rules against other states based on number of cases. So, as an example, uh, the folks from Texas. I'm in Texas right now. We can't travel to New York uh, because the number of cases in Texas are quite high. So these constraints will obviously have a significant impact um, on what's going on. But uh, I think the uh, the hotel management and the ownership structures has a lot to do as well. I think uh, uh, the, the ownership structure in the U.S. is very well structured. It's usually uh, the portfolios are heavily branded and the ownership structure is also very heavily leaning towards uh, institutional capital as well as REITs, et cetera. And they have a very black and white uh, approach about opening hotels. Uh, the, the costs of the unions are going up just because there is additional pressure on hotel operations to clean, et cetera. And a lot of REITs are just looking at it and saying that unless we hit, if you open the hotel and unless you hit 50% occupancy, uh, we're going to lose money. And for markets like New York, I mean, this could be like a couple of million dollars a month for a decent sized uh, property. So, so these aspects will definitely change. I think India, a lot of activities are owner driven or, or large companies driven where uh, EBITDA is not the only factor. Uh, we are a little bit more sentimental. <laughs> so I think those aspects will, uh, will play a, uh, role as well. But I think uh, the U.S. Uh, hotels have a little bit more of an advantage just because from an infrastructure perspective. So if you look at the American customer, everybody loves to drive. Even if uh, air travel is a little bit uh, controlled, the infrastructure is good, the roads are pretty good, the highway network is amazing. So what we've seen in our data, uh, when rate gain actually sits on a lot of data because we work with all the major hotel chains and we have a pricing uh, enterprise vertical as well. So we are able to look at information Absolutely. in real time. And what we've noticed in the US is that uh, there's a lot of drive market uh, that's going on. And especially this is a summer break, right? So the kids are off school. So zero to 250 mile radius, we've seen super um, uh, increase in terms of activity. So when we work with our data partners, what we've seen is that uh, everybody is searching for travel. And that's true pretty much throughout the world, even in India. Um, I think the way U.S. differs from some of the other markets is just that uh, people are able to uh, travel. You can cover a couple of hundred miles, you know, within a few hours just because of the uh, infrastructure. And then there's also a rise of uh, searches for alternate accommodation. Uh, there is a big trend that people are shying away from big 500 room or 1000 room hotels and they're going more towards boutique -ish or smaller establishments as well as things like Airbnb, et cetera. Um, I think so India will probably see something similar. Uh, so we, we get data pretty much from all geographies. So even in India, we've seen that the booking windows have shrunk. The length of stays are, are relatively short. Um, and I'm sure you will have a point of view as well because you're, you're in the market. Uh, so Absolutely. these recoveries will, will look a little bit different just because of the dynamics and where the demand factors uh, are. I'm pretty sure all hoteliers in every geography are very keen to uh, get started. I think the uh, the other thing that will vary is how is the local government supporting uh, travel and tourism. True. So I think UK is probably leading the pack because their country has been very active in supporting and actively giving out credits and discounts to uh, 
travel and tourism establishments just to initiate that travel. Even in the US, I think the government uh, rolled out like a trillion dollar relief package. Uh, so I think India has also done quite a few things. It's, it seems as if it's a little bit uh, behind the curve. Um, <laughs> uh, because at least in our interaction with some senior industry executives, it is quite okay. clear that uh, the industry is not very happy with what's going on. But I think these are unusual <clears throat> circumstances. And I think the intent of everyone is uh, to do the right thing. But I'll also be uh, very keen to hear your point of view on what you're noticing uh, okay. within the properties that you manage and, and uh, in India. What, what are Absolutely. you noticing? Well, well, you know, I think you've summed up a lot of it wherein government and, uh, you know, the people are the prime factor in terms of, uh, you know, contributing to, to the revival. It's, it's equally important. One thing that uh, I also take away from you is uh, wherein you, you spoke about the drive to destinations. It's something that, you know, is something that even we and my team uh, uh, hope that uh, those would be the first areas to recover. In fact, I was just reading an article this morning which spoke about how private jets have already started flying, right, uh, to, to certain destinations, uh, not too many. Uh, Goa has been a hot spot again. Uh, right. So, so we see revival which is in process. Hotels in Maharashtra have opened up from Wednesday, which is again a revival sign. The government is being supportive. Yes, uh, you know, they all have two sides of the story. But uh, I feel that uh, the most important part is how you, uh, you know, inculcate health and safety, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we've had major hiccups in the past, the Indian industry, and in fact, uh, globally as well. You know, if, if I could, uh, you know, there, there were quite a few instances, you know, wherein everybody had to upgrade uh, their services. Uh, the latest one being technology uh, security in the past, right? And uh, we all came out of it, security got upgraded. Uh, now, in fact, health and safety has also got upgraded, which I think is only going to add on to the value and the offerings uh, a hotel can provide. And, and this mm -hmm. need not only be restrictive to the branded space, but I mm -hmm. feel even independent hotels have made uh, uh, the similar amount of effort uh, in order to ensure that, you know, they provide services which are unparalleled, but ensuring that health, safety and security are all in place.